Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ on this day in which we study proper 13 from chapter 14 of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus feeding the 5,000. Matthew 14 begins a new section in Matthew. And so we can see here with the beheading of John the Baptist right before this, Jesus feeds the 5,000. And uh, next week we have the pericope exactly after this one, Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33, which is Jesus walking on the water. But let's turn to this one now. A very familiar passage to us, Jesus feeding the 5,000. It's in all four of the Gospels, the only miracle that appears in all four of the Gospels. And I, it, it's one that's very familiar, so I just want to highlight some things that I think will lend uh, itself to the preaching of this text. First of all, I think it's very important to recognize that it's in a desert place, and you can see that that's referred to twice here. I've highlighted it in the blue here. And the desert is important because it, it shows us very clearly that this is the Moses miracle, and that Jesus is showing himself more than perhaps in any other place that he is the new Moses. And the Moses typology here is very important. And the contrast, of course, is that both are in the wilderness, but Moses feeds the people of God with manna, just enough for the day. And of course, on the, the sixth day, they take enough for the seventh day. But it's only enough. And if you have too much, there's, there's, it's going to rot. They're going to be maggots. With Jesus, there, is, there are always leftovers, there are always abundance, they are satisfied, there are, there are, you know, overflowing 12 baskets full, one for each disciple. And I think that's a very important point. But the, the, the reason I bring this up is that we are in this desert place. We are in a place that reminds us of the wandering in the wilderness. The second thing that is sort of a, a unique thing for Matthew's gospel is <clears throat> that you have this, this language of Jesus, you know, having mercy on them with that very important, you know, what I call the Matt Harrison word, the splagizo, that pouring out of one's innards, one's guts in mercy, and that it results in healing. And so the feeding of the 5,000 is pictured as a miracle of mercy in which Jesus is, in a sense, showing himself to be the one who cares for his people, and it is done in connection with healing. Now, interesting, Matthew does not have what Luke's gospel has, and that is teaching about the kingdom of God. That's a very unique Lucan accent. What Matthew has is this word mercy, and that's why I think you should really concentrate on that word and, and emphasize how the feeding of the 5,000 is a great act of mercy. <coughs> the, um, the other thing, of course, is the constellation of language that, <coughs> that comes up here. And I think we have to be very careful here to see how important that, that constellation of language is that has to do with eating. Um, I have highlighted them in a, a number of different ways. One is, in the green here, you see the core of what, what I might call the table fellowship kerygma. And this is that constellation of language that you're going to see um, when Jesus institutes the, the, um, the Lord's Supper on the night in which he was betrayed. It's the language, if you're in Luke's Gospel, that is also used in connection with Emmaus. But you, first of all, you have the reclining, which shows that this is a festive meal, a very important point for me, at least, that you recline at a meal. And that means that this would be considered a meal that would be in the same category as a Passover or a Sabbath evening Seder or another significant Jewish meal. When you see this, for example, at the Lord's Supper, obviously there's wine involved there. If you see at Emmaus, you, because they recline at the, the table, you know there's going to be wine. Whether there is here or not, 
it's, it's hard to say. But um, reclining usually requires that the festive meal include wine. And then you, you've got, and, and I'm always interested in which ones are participles and which ones are the main verbs. And there, is diff there are differences between the various um, evangelists. But here, it's the taking, it's the looking up into heaven, and there's the breaking. Those are the participles. So those are, in a sense, the, the dependent action words on the two main verbs, which are the blessing and the, the giving, the distribution, so to speak. Now, th this, this is the language of the table. And anybody who sees people reclining, who sees this kind of language of labon, you know, klasas, breaking of the bread, those two are almost in every one. Um, not everybody has him looking to heaven, but that's obviously a prayerful act. The blessing, th this is the, the, the blessing that would be part of the Jewish kind of way of prayer, which is the barakah, and then the distribution. And, and in Matthew's gospel, he gives it to his disciples, the bread, and then the disciples to the crowd. So there, there is the movement from Jesus to the disciples, and then from the disciples to the crowds. I think that's an interesting reflection. Um, in the yellow, I put kind of the language of eating or the language of bread. Here you have the language of eating, and then it's framed by that. So you can see it's, there's a, a frame by that. I, I didn't highlight this word. I should have apologized for that. Here's, here's the other word of bread. So you have bread and bread here. I did include in that constellation the satisfaction. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. So here you're already seeing the kind of satisfaction that the Messiah brings in the Messianic feast. And of course, one of the great signs of the, the abundance of the, the feast here is, are the broken pieces, the klasmaton. And I think those klasmaton are extremely important in terms of understanding how this is now the new Moses in which the cup is overflowing. And as I said, there are 12 baskets full, one for each disciple of the remaining pieces. Now, this becomes... The first, and it's not in Matthew, of course, it's in Luke's Gospel, in Acts 2.42, but it's anticipated already before that in the Emmaus meal, in, Act, in Luke 24.35, the breaking of the bread. That is the first, you know, word for the Eucharist in the Scriptures, that, that the breaking of the bread is the, the, the name for the Lord's Supper. Now, you know, again, uh, it, it is... It is an indication that it's a meal, but it becomes within the early Christian church a, a sign that this is a Eucharist. <clears throat> now, let's, let's just now look over the whole passage now that we have sort of, you know, at least considered the main parts here. And, I, you know, I always like to break down a text into its various parts. Um, to begin with, we have this very interesting section here where um, we, we have the indication that Jesus is in a boat. So we can see he's, he's moving to another part. He's privately in a desert place. Uh, the crowds are following him. Uh, that is, a, again, a parallel to Luke where they're, they're pressing upon him. They won't let him retire alone. Um, Notice the, the language here of the crowd, the crowd here, and you've got the great crowd here that he sees. And th this is the context in which he shows his compassion on them and heals their diseases. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's a very important, um, they're sick, maybe is the best translation there, they're sick. It, it's a very important context here of, of there being a great, number of people, which is how we get to the 5,000 men. And as everybody knows, it doesn't include the women and children. So this is even a bigger crowd than 5,000. Um, and, and you have the language there in these crowds of Jesus having compassion. 
And, and this particular aspect of compassion is healing them. The other act of compassion is going to be feeding them. And here you can see where healing and feeding basically amount to the same thing. I love the fact that this is taking place towards evening. That connects it to the Lord's Supper. I think that exact expression, if I'm not mistaken, is used in Matthew at the beginning of the Lord's Supper. And, um, and as I said, there, there is this conversation then that goes on once they, you know, um, acknowledge that the, the hour is, is declining, you know, loose the crowds in order that they might go. You know, the disciples are, are, are you know, asking Jesus this because it is, it is the end of the day. And Jesus has this conversation with them about eating, and that gives birth, of course, to the, to the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. Now, that, that miracle comes, of course, in the context, as I said, of his compassion. And... Um, and, and Jesus, it's always interesting how coy he is here, or appears to be, you know, <clears throat> um, give to them something to eat. I mean, it's almost absurd for them. They only have five loaves, two fish, you know. Um, but then the, 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 the action of the meal, he, he, puts, he puts it in, in, um, in motion there. And... And he, he brings about what I think is, in many ways, the quintessential miracle of Jesus in his gospel, in the, in the gospels, where you can really see Jesus being the one who is the creator coming to his creation to feed the people of God and to satisfy their needs. I think you can see that this is that splagizo, that, that Jesus with his guts pouring out, that, that Jesus of mercy, that Jesus who comes to, to give above and beyond um, what any prophet or anybody has before him. He is, in fact, the final eschatological prophet. He is the new Moses. He is the Messiah who has come to his creation to bring healing and wholeness and, and satisfaction, even in a, in a desert place, where it seems hopeless to feed thousands and thousands of people, he is the one who comes bringing that satisfaction. Um, you can't help but see that this is part of the, the, the miracles that Jesus does um, that, that are, are really in many ways creation miracles, but that they point to the larger miracle and that is that, that he will feed the people of God now with, with holy food, with the food of his very body and blood. Um, we like to speak of this as being Eucharistic. It's not the Eucharist, but it is Eucharistic in that Christ is present here bodily, you know, the, 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 the local presence of Jesus with his people, feeding them, satisfying their needs, and showing them in that very act his salvation.